See, most of you guys will know all the stuff that happened with flipping Burning Man this you know last couple of days. Um, unfortunately, heavy rain pour um, it led to the entire site of Burning Man turning into a flipping mud pit and loads of people being stranded. And effectively, it was really funny because if I'm not mistaken, I've kind of kept abreast of Burning Man for the longest time, ever since I kind of got into clubbing. It's always been a kind of thing that I kind of had in the back of my mind of like, okay, one day I'm going to go to it in the same way that I always one day wanted to always go to like a silent retreat, wanted to do like an ayahuasca thing. Like there's certain things on my bucket list I've always kind of wanted to do. And I, you know, Burning Man's always been one of them. It sort of felt like a bit like a pilgrimage, especially for somebody that's like a, an avid fan of nightlife like myself. And, um, but one thing I remember learning across, you know, along the way, uh, watching documentaries and shit, I think there's one called like Sparks and stuff that exists out there. There's tons of Burning Man documentaries was that it was a thing of like self-reliance it was a thing of like you know doing away with your comforts from home it was in the middle of the desert um you had to basically barter things it was a lot of money to get there but once you got there again it was the whole barter communication self-reliance being dependent on each other and then obviously once you leave not leaving a trace and obviously being mindful of the environment and not wanting to damage it in any type of way but that was kind of what it was but then over the years it's kind of become a lot more popular it's become the in thing to do for a lot of people in silicon valley a lot of the influence decided to go there now and i've heard over the years through various accounts on twitter on twitter or on podcasts and shit of people complaining about burning man not being what it once was and obviously there's still pockets of it that are great i'm sure but by and large people that have been there since the first burn are saying hey it's kind of it's kind of like lost its way so when i initially saw the mud thing it felt like to me it quite it felt quite prophetic in that it felt like it kind of washed away all the people that were just in it for the look in it for the clout in it for the image not in it for the right reasons and the people that stayed who probably had no other options didn't have the means were the ones that really were about it that, that's what it kind of felt like to me i didn't really see it as negative as other people saw obviously in the time i'm sure being there and you know having everything covered in mud getting fucking what well, those there's a particular type of burn that you get on your feet and shit walking around in that sort of clay or dust or desert in the first place especially after it rains and shit it basically turns into salt and it can burn your feet and shit like crazy shit right so i'm sure the experience wasn't the greatest but i'm sure the ones who left who were left there felt like they bonded a lot more with the people around them. They had a far better experience than they probably did in, in, in previous years. And it sort of restored their feeling or their faith um, in the festival. In the same way, I'm sure other festivals probably had the same thing. Like when it washes out, or when it's rainy and stuff, people kind of, you know, in general, anyway, I always say when it comes to those events or festivals, they always sell out ahead of time because people are always kind of hungry to get the clout points of, oh, I got my ticket. But when the day comes around, people love to bail and flake on those things all the time so you should never be worried oh you're never going to get a ticket no no you always get a ticket to these type of things just need to be patient but for the most part people are always going to bail but i feel like the ones that do bail are the ones that are never really about it and the ones that stay are the ones that were so i'm going to play a couple of videos and read an article of some of the you know stuff that went down but the first thing i'll show you is this article courtesy of new york times i'll give you a brief overview of what happened but i'm sure most of you know but just to kind of put it into context of the videos i saw because the videos from people that are actually on the ground paying the entire different experience of what people said in the media and again for me was a reminder of never to really trust what the media says kind of do your own little research and find out what's actually going on on the ground because how they painted it is different from how it happened yes there are people that were complaining about their experience but for the most part the ones that were there still did have a great time so this is courtesy of new york times it says burning man's muddy aftermath a desert full of mop or moop um, it says here after days of rain and mud blocked exits and postponed parties the last of burning man's crowds trudged out of the nevada desert on wednesday morning the moop remained um that is burning man's aggro for rubbish short for matter out of place a galaxy of jet sand scattered across the muddy alkali flats after a torrential rain temporarily stranded tens of thousands of people in the annual river rivalry reverie sorry of art and music if i'm not mistaken i think they said they had the rain you're meant to get like in two years and 24 hours or something like that crazy right so just like a a freak um sort of like weather change um Orphan tents laid checked, sorry, laid caked in dried muck. Um, toilet papers and carpets were churned um, into um, sodden dirt, and they are part of an epic cleanup that lies ahead for Burning Man. This is a lot worse than last year, said a volunteer who used to Burning Man and Monica Raven as she surveyed the scene. So last year was bad, even. 
Last year there was no rain and that still was bad. So clearly it shows you the the people going to Burning Man don't really get it as much as they did before because the whole idea behind it, again, is like leaving zero trace. You're meant to arrive there at this blank canvas, set up this incredible little, you know, temporary village, town, city, whatever, this, this incredible little community. And when you leave, you're meant to leave no trace that you were there. So basically you return the um, environment back to its, um, you know, actual occupants um it says here this is also worth uh, the work of tidying up the remote site after burning man gets far less attention than the festival's flaming fire um, fears and psychedelic um or pyres uh, pyres how do you pronounce that word and psychedelic art installations and charter planes packed with tech bros and celebrities but a meticulous restoration of the black rock desert is required under the federal permits that allow seventy thousand person pop-up cities on remote public lands in the northwestern nevada the um, summary event and you know what's funny the images of seeing Diplo and Chris Rock like scurrying away like little rats as the fins go down being the first to leave is hilarious it just shows you the people that were going to just for the look you know scurried away first and the ones that are actually about the event state um this is also part of the ethos of the event organizers included um detailed cleanup requirements in the descriptions so in the instructions they give to attendees and they track every campsite's performance no garbage cans are provided and every camper is required to remove all of their own trash as you can see there some of the mud jesus christ that looks so mucky um you see there are more pictures of the mud someone lying in the mud which is hilarious very white thing to do there she's grounding herself um even so volunteer crews um spend three weeks after the festival collecting trash and raking the ruts and the hillcocks out of the dirt to smooth and restore the alkaline playa they draw maps showing the dirtiest spots and crawl on all fours to pluck sequins and plastic scrapes from the barren ground in early october agents of the u.s bureau of land management will survey maryland parts of the four thousand acre site and to judge whether the cleanup was sufficient said asseline a spokesperson for the agency so we've seen that right and then let's go to the video because this video i think shows a better way of depicting what actually went down there your title is i'm trapped at burning man um here's what actually happened um from a user called judson graham what's going on buddy this is bad we're at burning man but it's not dusty and windy how it's supposed to be the dry lake bed is rehydrating Holy oh. Take it there, that is obscene Tens of thousands of people are being told to shelter in place at the popular Burning Man Festival because they are literally stuck in the mud. They're trapped. Situation at Burning Man. Enormous sea of hey, mud. Good morning. You know, this is quite the emergency. Festival organizers are telling those attending to shelter. People have been told to conserve food and water. Burning Man Festival redubbed Muddy Man. Muddy Man. It's hilarious. Saturday morning. All right. Three, Second of September. Two, one. 9 44 a.m in front of the man on saturday which it's supposed to burn tonight at 8 p.m i don't think it's gonna burn there's a strange like dystopian feeling out here like burning man paused in time there's bikes everywhere People are just out, and the biggest thing is it's completely silent. There's no music. Mm. There's always music here. Also, the media people have been flying drones, and I don't have the drone permit. But I have the, I have the foot permit. Jesus Christ. Lovely. Bikes are by far the most common mode of transportation in Black Rock City and have been rendered useless as a mode of transportation. So next to basically every lamppost, there is abandoned bikes laid up waiting for their owners to come retrieve them at a later date. This is, uh, this is known as an art car or a mutant vehicle at Burning Man. Generally, they'll roll around deep playa and play music and a lot of people will follow them around. And there's hundreds of them all stuck from like this one a couple hundred feet from town to several miles out on deep playa with no way to recover them right now these people jacked theirs up so they didn't sink into the mud which was smart of them 
A friend of mine just texted me. I heard you guys are in a national state of emergency. <laughs> Wait, seriously? Yeah. So Burning Man's a national state of emergency? Uh, supposedly on the outside, in the default world, we are in a national state of emergency. I'm freaking out. <laughs> <laughs> Burning Man's canceled. We are in Black Rock City, reporting live from the state of emergency in Nevada. What's your name? I'm Dan Cycles. I'm from Mountain View, and I was cool. part of the burn the second year on the playa. And I was consecutively here through 96, and then I took a 28-year hiatus, and I'm back. How wow. do you feel about your first year back? Well, it's the new era of Burning Man. I'm from the original tribe. What? I'm part of Cacophony Society, so I was oh, wow, part of the amazing. origin of the origin of Burning Man. There were 250 people here when I when I first came here. And wow. how do you feel about what's happening right now? This state of emergency. Well, it, it's just a state of emergency. It's uh, the worst conditions I've ever experienced right? on the playa. Oh, One shit. thing is remarkable. Catch this. What we're experiencing right now harkens more back to the original Burning Man exactly. than the grandiose, over-the-top lights and right. spectacle. Mm -hmm. It makes Burning Man such an attractive festival or event. The way we are hunkering down is closer to what Burning Man was. Come on, let's be honest. This sucks. It's it's <laughs> it's no fun getting everything wet and having to protect everything. But hey. the, but the conversations that I'm having with people, yep. we're all like experiencing sort of duress together. Yeah, it sort 100%. of opens things up. It strips yeah. you down. You're naked, and and that's more like the intimacy of <laughs> what Burning Man was. Riz upon Riz. That I didn't quite encounter. Yeah. The, the 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 days before before the this inundation mm. and if essentially that's what i kind of got from it as sucky as it was as crappy as it was the people that were left made the best of it because they're already there um but one thing that kind of stood out to me was there's a real distinct difference in festival going from americans to europeans i should have known this anyway but this sort of stuff with the rain and whatnot is kind of normal in Europe or European festivals, especially in the UK. There's always a you know possibility that your festival could get ruined just through just the weather. No issue with the organizers or the fucking you know the sound or the stage design or the fucking flow of traffic. Nothing. It's just be just the weather can completely change how a festival is put on or maybe even the festival going on in the first place. <laughs> It's a national state of emergency. What's up with this, dude? Whatever you want with it. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Dick, Inspection. <laughs> Dick on a stick. <laughs> What's been the most Burning Man thing that's happened to you in the past 24 hours? I had a really fun night last night. Got to perform at Camp Question Mark, get dance, and then I got to hop up, throw my bike on an art car, and drive around in an art car through like the mist and the dust storm and a little bit of raindrop. and it was pretty magical. Were you invited to perform on stage? Mm-hmm. That's it, are you a dancer? I am a fire spinner. Could you spin your umbrella? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, one more, what's your panda's name? My panda's name is Mr. Slinky. What's the significance of that to you? Just his name. It's right now, yeah, so I, trending. I, I... Yeah. Like on Twitter, Burning Man's a national state of emergency. Oh yeah, really? Yeah. Oh yeah. I feel <laughs> we are stuck here. We will have to wait to save food, save water. I love his vibe. And wait for the storm. Oh yeah. To get over. Do you have enough water and food? I think so. What's your name? Alex. Alex Judson. Nice to meet you, buddy. Nice to meet you, buddy. <laughs> Probably Spanish, right? Alex. Oh, bless them. Good vibe, I think Oh, my so. name is Eowyn. Is this your car? No, it's not. I'm just climbing it. How was it on top? It was amazing. It was bouncy. Did it feel like a national state of emergency? Definitely not. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think Burning Man burners really make the best of things. Like, we're already, like, out here pretty prepared. And this just, like, brought everyone together as a community. Like, it definitely brought my camp together. The rain just, like, brought a different kind of chaos and extreme to this entire festival last year it was like 50 degrees and this year it's raining and flooding and it's beautiful i was able to stay out in the sun longer because of the clouds and it was like it's cool and 
I could dance longer. It was just, it's a gift. Every, every, every part of this is a gift. What's been the most Burning Man thing that happened to you this burn? This is my first burn. Oh, well, happy first burn. I should have asked you. <laughs> no worries. The flow of, of Burning Man is beautiful. Like, I started the night out climbing the cube and ended out at a sound car trapped by the rain and the wind and the dust and it was exactly where i wanted to be i was with beautiful people and Amazing. perfect so you were on playa when it hit oh yeah how did you get back oh uh, well, we, just, we just got back we had really prepared the day before because we knew it was gonna rain so we had like trenched around our camp and made sure everything was up off the ground and got a good crew you gotta have a good crew out here where should we go to talk to the next people